Good morning. The first item of business today is general questions. Our first question from Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it supports care experienced young people into higher and further education. Minister Richard Lockhead. The Scottish Government provided additional investment of over £5 million in 2018 19 and 2019 20 to increase the care experience bursary across further education and higher education to £8,100 per year. This additional investment funded an increase from the previous level of £7,625 in HE and £4,185 in FE, providing a significant increase in the financial support available to care experienced students. We are, of course, continuing to work on improvements and focus additional support funding on those students who are most in need. Fulton McGregor. I, I thank the Minister for that response. And the, the Minister might be aware that I recently wrote to SAS on behalf of a constituent who has been told that she doesn't qualify for a care experience bursary because her period in care was not in the UK. I su suspect that this is an anomaly in the system and will affect only a small number of students. Would the Minister commit to looking into this matter further so that to ensure that all care ex experienced children have the same and equal rights regardless of where in the world they experience being in the care of the state? Minister. Uh, well, thank you for the question. I will certainly undertake to look into the circumstances outlined by Fulton McGregor. I'm sure he'll appreciate that there may well be anomalies in the system and they should be investigated uh, and sorted if necessary. But clearly we do have to lay down some kind of criteria as to who qualifies for student support in Scotland. But I do agree with the premise of the member's question and I do hope he gets a satisfactory reply, but I certainly will investigate the circumstances. Question number two, Liam MacArthur. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what guidance it provides for college students regarding fees encountered for starting a course and then withdrawing. Minister Richard Lockett. The majority of colleges do not apply a fee to full-time students at higher education level who withdraw early from their course. As colleges operate independently of government, it is ultimately the decision of individual colleges as to whether they apply charges to students who withdraw early and before the fee cut-off date of the 1st of December. Students are advised by the Student Awards Agency Scotland that they could be charged a fee by their institution should they withdraw before the fee cut-off date. However, I expect institutions to take into account the personal circumstances of individual students when applying any fees. Liam MacArthur. I thank the Minister for that helpful response. I was contacted by a constituent forced to drop out of an HNC course after a deterioration in her mental health. On returning to Orkney, my constituent's mother then passed away suddenly, adding further distress to an already anxious and difficult time. Almost simultaneously and without warning, my constituent was informed by the college that she would face a charge of over £400 and even the threat of court action. I'm in touch with the college principal, who helpfully has agreed to look into the matter. But does the minister believe clearer guidance could be provided to colleges about using discretion over levying charges in such circumstances? And does the minister accept that this reflects the duty of care colleges owe their students, including those who have left with no option but to drop out early? Yeah. Minister. Well, first of all, I'm very sorry to hear about Mr. MacArthur's constituent's uh, personal circumstances. Uh, and I absolutely understand why he's raising this case. Um, I would expect colleges to understand the reasons as to why any student may be withdrawing from a course early and it's very important they therefore take any decision about asking for fees to be paid within the context of the circumstances that's led to that withdrawal. So I shall certainly ask my officials to look into the case highlighted by Mr MacArthur but I am pleased to hear that Mr uh, Paul Little, the principal of City of, College, uh, City of Glasgow College uh, is looking into this matter and I'm hopefully he'll give a satisfactory response. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Minister clarify if Scottish Government statistics on positive destinations take into account uh, those young people who start a college course and then withdraw after a short period of time? Minister. Well, there's a range of different circumstances that are taken into account with statistics, so I don't think there's a simple answer to the question because there's different cut-off dates and different ways in which they're calculated. But I, I'll certainly drop a note to the member just to elaborate on that point. Question number three, Peter Chapman. To ask the Scottish Government what percentage of children in the NHS Grampian area who have mental health issues are being seen within the 18-week referral to treatment uh, target. Minister Joe Fitzpatrick. In the latest quarter for which statistics are available, which is January to March this year, 43.3% of children and young people were referred to the Grampians, Grampian CAMS uh, were seen within 18 weeks. Peter Chapman. 
I thank the Minister for that answer, although I am very disappointed with it. As he rightly says, in the first three months of this year, only 43% of young patients were seen within 18 weeks. NHS Grampian have said they have some of the longest waiting times. It is the lowest staffed board and it is also the lowest funded health board in Scotland. The consistency of missed targets at NHS Grampian show that there is a real problem. Can the Minister stop with the excuses, accept this is unacceptable, and tell me how the Scottish Government plans to address this? Minister. So, um, I, I think the Minister for, Public, for, for um, Mental Health has been absolutely clear that, that this is unacceptable. Um, that's why we have taken a range of measures um, to, to, to help support um, health boards reach the, the standard that 90% of patients are seen within 18-week referral. Um, and the Scottish Government is currently working with health boards, including Grampian, to agree their annual operation plans, including how they will deliver on the standard. To help boards um, and integration joint boards achieve this ambition, we've outlined a package of measures to do more to support positive mental health and prevent ill health, which includes a quarter of a billion pounds of additional investment. That comes in addition to the £54 million which has already been invested to help boards improve their performance against waiting time targets by investing in workforce development, recruitment and retention and service uh, improvement support. Our investment has allowed the CAMS workforce uh, to increase by 75% with the number of CAMS psych uh, psychologists more than doubling under this government. Thank you. Question number four, Gil Patterson. Thanks very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish gov Government how it, it helps families to meet the cost of child st uh, starting school. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Uh, Presiding Officer, we have delivered a wide range of initiatives to help families meet the cost associated with starting school, including the Pupil Equity Fund and improvements to both free school meals <laughs> and the school clothing grant. Our Best Start grant has already provided more than £3.5 million to families on low incomes at key stages in their children's early years. Since the 3rd of June, it has also provided a £250 school-age payment when a child is due to start primary school. It can be used for anything from school clubs, travel costs, days out or clothing. Gil Patterson. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer? Cabinet Secretary, I've raised this with you before and you will see a motion in my name uh, in a similar vein on universal credit awareness. Uh, can I... Can the Scottish Government say what they are uh, uh, doing to promote and, uh, and inform the public on the new Best Start payment? Uh, we, we really need to make sure those that need the support know exactly where they can get it. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Officer, Mr Patterson makes a, a serious point. He's made this point to me a number of times before on the awareness of uh, measures of this type to try to support families. Um, a coordinated communications plan is being implemented, working with local authorities, health boards and third sector organisations who support applicants. <laughs> uh, we have also provided, as we did for the launch of the previous Best Start uh, grant payments, a range of guidance, uh, promotional materials and media content for stakeholders. And we hope that that will explain eligibility criteria and encourage applications. Thank you. Question number five, Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it's ensuring that there is a skills base to deliver the transformational change required to address the climate emergency. Minister Jamie Hepburn. We have established the Just Transition Commission, which is expertise in the labour market and skills, to advise ministers on the move to a net zero economy. The Commission's work plan has identified skills as a key topic. Analysis of current and future labour requirements, including skills, will form an ongoing part of its considerations. Julian Martin. Thank the Minister for that answer. The Just Transition Commission will be key to ensuring that Scotland's transition from burning fossil fuels to a low carbon economy is one in which our citizens will not be disadvantaged in terms of employment and will have the opportunities to gain the skills for the future. Can I ask if the Just Transition Commission will include representatives from Scotland's colleges and universities as this work continues and what roles skills development Scotland will play in ensuring our workforce is ready for the transition? Minister. Uh, commission membership uh, was laid out in December of uh, last year. Uh, there are uh, representatives of academia uh, on there. Uh, Professor Jim Skies, the, uh, the chair, uh, and we also have Professor Karen Turner from Strathclyde University. So there are representatives of uh, academia. Uh, skills Development Scotland, uh, of course, are our national skills agency. They undertake skills planning on a, 
across sector, uh, across all sectors, uh, across all areas of the country, uh, which supports an assessment of current and future uh, skills needs. They are the government's skills agency, and where we set out uh, our ambitions, we expect them to respond, and this area is no different. Jamie Halker Johnson. Uh, it's now been two years since the Scottish Conservatives first called for the establishment of a circular economy, education and skills academy, a move that could boost uh, skills base across uh, uh, to tackle climate breakdown. Now that the First Minister has declared a climate emergency, does the Cabinet Secretary agree that such an academy should be established as a priority? Minister. Uh, we will give consideration to all uh, reasonable propositions made uh, in good faith, but I would observe we have a well-established skills system already. We invest considerable amounts in it uh, already. Uh, we expect that skill system to be responsive to our needs, including in this area. We will shortly be publishing our National Skills Action Plan, which will set out how we intend to make sure we have an ever more responsive skill system to all the requirements. But yes, we'll, I will always be willing to consider any proposition, but candidly right now, we have a skill system in place and I expect it to be responding to the task at hand. Question number five, Ruth McGuire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government um, what assessment it's made of the potential impact on glass recycling rates of including glass containers in its planned deposit return scheme. Cabinet Secretary Rosanna Cunningham. As outlined through our Stage 1 full business case published on 8th May, we anticipate that a DRS will increase glass bottle recycling rates from the existing 64% towards 90%. As bottles make up the bulk of glass packaging used for food and drink, this will drive up the overall glass recycling rate. The Scottish Government remains committed to supporting local authority collection arrangements for a range of packaging materials alongside DRS under our proposed reforms of wider packaging producer responsibility arrangements, the costs to local authorities of delivering these services will in future be met by producers. Ruth McGuire. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Ardar Glass is an important employer in my constituency. They've raised concerns with me that in other countries, an unintended consequence of including glass in deposits was that manufacturers switched to plastics. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide reassurance that the matter of glass is being considered carefully with both industry and consumers being consulted and will she join me on a visit to Ardar Glass in Irvine to see firsthand the contribution that they make to recycling. Cabinet Secretary. Well I am committed to working closely with industry uh, as we progress with the implementation of our proposals um, and in fact I'm already uh, meeting Ardar Glass on 26 June to discuss our plans in more detail. I do recognise the concerns around the inclusion of glass however I believe these factors are more than offset by the significant increase in glass recycling and the reduction in carbon emissions that this will deliver. There's also the potential for the glass industry to directly benefit from the higher quality recyclable glass, which we expect to capture through DRS. And Maurice Golden. Uh, I refer members to my register of interests. The inclusion of glass in a deposit return scheme is a risk to local authorities and key sectors such as the Scotch whisky. For example, over £3 million of funding has been withdrawn from Aberdeenshire Council for their new waste collection system, and industry have warned about the viabil viability of the supply chain. Will the Cabinet Secretary pledge to ensure that no council job losses are resulting from the scheme and also that all resources collected via the scheme are recycled here in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I, I had understood that the Conservatives supported the inclusion of glass uh, within the scheme. Um, and uh, I, I just hope that by the tone of, of Maurice Golden's question, they're not beginning to uh, um, uh, renege on that support. Um, uh, special advisers and officials have recently met with uh, other glass industry uh, interests. So we are aware of the concerns. And I think I made that very clear when I made my statement. Um, that we understand some of the issues that are around uh, uh, the inclusion of glass. However, uh, I made it clear in my earlier answer to Ruth McGuire um, that the issues that are connected to local authority recycling aren't just as straightforward as perhaps are being suggested by Maurice Golden. Uh, and we will, of course, continue to keep all of the issues uh, related to that under, uh, uh, under consideration. That is what the Implementation Advisory Group is for. Question number seven, Edward Mountain. Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government on what date it was first made aware of bullying in NHS Highland and what action it took. Cabinet Secretary Jean Freeman. 
Uh, as the member will know from the response he received to this same question on the 23rd of May, a search of all records available from the 1st of January 2011 shows that the earliest correspondence on file relating to NHS Highland, which mentioned the term bullying, was received on the 16th of March 2014. This was correspondence addressed to a trade union and copied to the Scottish Government for information only. The Scottish Government have proactively engaged with the individual concern and continue to engage to this day. Edward Mountain. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. I understand that the Board of NHS Highland knew of serious bullying allegations in 2010. And as you have pointed out, the Scottish Government knew about bullying in March 2014. If the issue had been dealt with properly then, it wouldn't be the crisis it is today. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree it was a serious failure by the Government that has allowed the situation to develop as it has? Cabinet Secretary. No, I do not agree. And despite Mr Mountain's best efforts, uh, I think that we have handled this situation very well since the commissioning of the Sturrock Report, which was prompted by allegations of a culture of bullying. Not individual cases, a culture of bullying. I think we handled that swiftly, we handled it well. It was an independent report which has been well received, yeah. I'm sure to Mr Mountain Chagrin, by staff and others in NHS Highland, and on which we continue to act. And indeed, yeah. a, week a week today, I will visit NHS Highland myself <laughs> to understand exactly how they're progressing their action plan. And I think it behoves members, particularly those who claim to represent those in the Highlands, to get behind this report and give it their absolute support. And David Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. Has the Cabinet Secretary considered the Francis Review, which looked into bullying within the NHS in England? Its recommendations included early support of whistleblowers, cultural change and prevention of isolation and containment. Will the Cabinet Secretary incorporate these recommendations into NHS Highland and beyond? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm grateful to Mr Stewart for that a supplementary question. As he knows from the statement I made on the publication of the Sturrock Review, I made clear that I understood well that some of what was in that report uh, applied across as lessons across our NHS and that is why one of the actions that I've taken is to bring together a leadership group from across our regulation bodies, our Royal Colleges, uh, our staff and trade union representatives and our boards to meet with me over the summer to look at what more we need to do across our NHS to ensure we have a positive working culture. And that, of course, responds in many ways to the recommendations of the Francis Review. And question number eight, Tavish Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what progress is being made in developing coach park facilities at the Yarlsoff site in Shetland. Minister Ben McPherson. Presiding Officer, as uh, Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop explained in a letter to Tavish Scott on the 2nd of May, discussions remain ongoing regarding the proposed improvements to visitor facilities at Giles Hoff. Uh, legitimate questions have been raised regarding best value for money uh, for the public and taxpayers, and ministers await further advice that this position has been addressed. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary has asked him Historic Environment Scotland to ensure that matters are expedited in so far as is within their control. Tavis Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Sumbra Hotel, local bus businesses and the cruise line industry have been told for three years that Historic Environment Scotland and the agencies and the government would sort out these coach park facilities. But all we've had is endless buck passing. Why? Minister. For clarity, uh, President Officer, uh, Historic Environment Scotland are aware of the vital need, as has been expressed, for facilities at Gileshoff and the need, uh, the, the current provision for these facilities is not uh, sustainable. Uh, plus, Envi Historic Environment Scotland have been considering their options and have been keeping ministers informed with developments. But as I'm sure Tavish Scott uh, is aware, there are legal sensitivities around current negotiations which relate to their proposals to improve parking and visitor facilities. Uh, as such, it would be inappropriate for me to go into any detail on those on ongoing discussions at this time. Uh, what's more, uh, as uh, would always be the, the case in any process of this nature, it is the responsibility of ministers to ensure that best value for money can be evidenced. Uh, but, presiding officer, I will ensure that Historic Environment Scotland are asked to make contact 
with the member to further discuss these matters and to inform Tavish Scott of any updates as appropriate. Thank you very much. Apologies to Jenny Gilruth and Bill Kidd. Time is up.